across the Village Media Network and now available wherever you get your favorite podcast. This is Trillium Talk, a weekly look inside Ontario politics at Queen's Park with our team from the Trillium. And back with us this week is reporter Charlie Pinkerton. Welcome back, Charlie. Always great to have you on the show. Thanks, Scott. Always happy to do this. All right. Uh, The big story of the week involves the uh, PC party and their legal bills spending more than $600,000 on law firms last year, the same law firms that represented key players in the Greenbelt scandal. Seems like an odd coincidence. You covered the story, Charlie. Can you walk us through how you found this out? Yeah, so May 31st is the deadline uh, each year for political parties to file their annual financial returns to Election Ontario for the year before. So the PC party, they filed theirs a couple days early, which uh, allowed Jessica actually to go and wrangle the documents and relay them to me and let me sort of get to searching. And so um, I guess I should just note that uh, these financial returns, they show so party finances, so not government finances, um and you know major political parties like the pcs liberals ndp greens for example um they're predominantly funded through things like donations fundraiser ticket sales and then subsidies from elections ontario as well which have been around for a long time um and so you know last summer and and last fall at what what at what was the peak of the Greenbelt scandal, really. Um, the Liberals and the NDP were calling on the Ford government to promise that taxpayers wouldn't be on the hook uh, for legal fees for those involved. And so in October, Ford's office uh, told the Toronto Star that the government wouldn't be footing the bill for these services. And there is a bee flying around. That's lovely. Don't pull uh, a Doug Ford and swallow it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I would have learned from the best on that one. Um Anyways, yeah, so uh, the Premier's office eventually told the Toronto Star uh, in October uh, that the government wouldn't be fitting the bill for uh, legal services for those involved in the Greenbelt scandal. Um, And so keeping that in mind uh, and with the deadline coming up for these returns to be filed, um, we were basically looking to see if uh, any of those payments would be made by the PC party. So um, this was made a bit easier as well by the fact that uh, the integrity commissioner uh, in his report listed a lot of the lawyers uh, who served as counsel for witnesses. Um, And yeah, that, uh, you know, once we got the documents, I was ultimately able to uh, figure out, like you said, that more than $600,000 was paid by the party last year to seven different law firms that in various ways provided legal services to uh, eight of, you know, really the central characters from the Ford government who were involved in the Greenbelt scandal. Yeah, so no one commented on the record, but uh, some well-placed sources are confirming that the payments uh, they're aware of, at least, are exactly what they look like. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, political parties do commonly pay for pay lawyers for a number of of things, like even outside of times of of scandal. Um, But the PC party payments in 2023 were, you know, a bit of an outlier, both in terms of uh, the number of payments, the amounts themselves. Um, And like you said, uh, two very well placed sources told us that uh, some amount of the more than 600,000 paid to the seven firms um, were to cover the uh, uh, fees of legal services uh, for those involved in the Greenbelt scandal. and you know these firms also represent a solid percentage uh or they represented a solid percentage of the key people from the government who were involved in the controversy and six of seven of them were new expenses for the party in 2023 meaning it didn't pay them anything the year before with the loan exception being the law firm that uh, is really for long represented premier doug ford but even that firm uh was paid a lot more about four times as much last year than the year before All right, let's uh, shift, Charlie, to alcohol sales and the Ford government moving up the timeline to get beer and wine into grocery and corner stores from the year 2026 to the next few months. Now, consumers may like the convenience of it, but the liberals are saying the cost will be huge. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll just uh, note that the Liberals here, they, they've sort of been trying to pound it away at a bit of a theme. You know, for months, they've been kind of hammering away at uh, Doug Ford's gravy train, um, which 
stemmed from the rather high number of premier's office staffers who made the sunshine list last year. And so what they've been saying about this, uh, this announcement, which is to the, the government, the Ford government uh, is basically expediting its plan to allow more corner stores and grocery stores to offer wider alcohol sales. Um, the liberals have been calling this a billion dollar booze doggle. Um, that's because the Ford government at first, uh, last week when it announced the plan, said it would cost taxpayers about $225 million. Um, the government has to pay the beer store that because it's uh, getting out of the contract that it had with the beer store early. Um, shortly after the Liberals released you know, their own set of calculations, um, saying that when considering as well the discount below uh, LCBO prices that uh, these stores will be able to be able to sell uh, alcohol at and sort of LCBO service fees and one time license fees that it seems the government is going to miss out on that it could cost the government, uh, you know, over a billion dollars. And so there's been a lot of debate about what the cost will actually be. Uh, Jessica, she did a story essentially examining uh, the math. And from what she reported, it seems likely the move will cost the government more than the $225 million it said it would, um, but perhaps not as high as the billion dollar boost doggle as the liberals have been saying it would be. As far as the uh, timeline is concerned, uh, Charlie, how soon can we expect to see booze on the store shelves in grocery, big box, and corner stores? What's the uh, rollout look like? Yeah, so it's going to happen in three stages. Uh, The first stage will be on August 1st when grocery stores that are currently licensed to sell beer, uh, cider, wine, um, they'll be able to sell pre-mixed cocktails and the like and offer larger pack sizes, so up to like 30 packs of beer. Uh, Then on September 5th, um, eligible corner stores will be able to sell beer, wine, cider, etc., um, and then finally, on October 31st, um, all eligible grocery stores, big box stores, they'll be able to sell beer, wine, all of the rest, uh, including the large pack sizes as well. All right. For the most comprehensive coverage of Ontario politics anywhere, log on and become a Trillium Insider today. And you can do just that at the Trillium.ca. Reporter at the Trillium, Charlie Pinkerton. Thanks for this, Charlie. Cheers. Have a great week. Same to you, Scott.